Good morning, Jerry White speaking here. I would like to introduce you to our new Mercury 120 recovery system to recover mercury and phosphorus from compact fluorescent tubes, fluorescent tubes and discharge lamps. As you can see, we've used a C container. We've used the C container for the strength that you can visibly see and also for the security of the, of the system that no one can get in with any ease. I would now like to introduce you to various parts of the system so that you can see how it is filled with water, how we get the processed materials out of the, out of the unit. And we'll start off with the water. We introduce the water to a holding tank inside. This little door here opens up to a one-way valve which only allows water into the unit. We open the valve up, the unit gets filled up and the, and the sensor inside will shut the water off automatically and it's controlled by the computer. Then you just come back, you turn the valve off, you disconnect it, but there is no water can come out of the container from that valve. Okay, from this side of the container we can see the following air vents. This is the exhaust vent from the inside of the container, which is the only one that really sheds any interest on the machinery itself, because this is the actual exhaust from the, from the unit as it's processing. This grill here is basically just a, a fresh air grill for the air compressor which is inside. This one here is for the refrigerated chiller inside, similar to the air conditioner one on the other side of the container. We can now move down to, to this larger unit here, which is where we reclaim the glass and the end caps and the bits and pieces from the process. We can now open it up. As you can see, when this is open, it has a contact at the top. Nothing can happen inside. It, the whole unit is shut down. And that's why we have these valves on here, these lines on here. When we open it up, you will see that this is where the glass comes out of. This is where the end caps are coming out. And this is where the larger end caps from the CFLs are coming out of this one. So it's in three different stages where we have the glass, we have the small end caps from the fluorescent tubes, we have the larger end caps from discharge lamps and from compact fluoros, and it separates the three of them. Last but not least, we have the three-phase power supply, which is connected up with a, with a three-phase military connector of the latest security fashion so that we cannot have any accidents with the power but it's also subsidized with an internal generator for remote conditions so it can be a self-contained unit. In the future, we expect to put solar panels on the, on the roof so that it will also assist in saving energy. We're now at the production end of the unit, and as we'll start from the far side, and we'll work our way across, and I'll try to explain everything to you that we are using. On this far side, you will see a door, which is very similar to this door, which gets you down both sides of the working area. These doors are locked with special keys for security, so that we have one lock, one key for that one, and we have another lock for this one. And it is totally secure and must remain so, and the only one that is allowed inside is the operator who is going to be licensed, because inside is going to contain the mercury and the phosphorus, and we don't want anyone able to touch either of them. So therefore, this is why the two doors are locked and kept locked. If this door is taken off for any reason, the unit will not work inside. It has to be on for a connection. We then go to, this is just an emergency alarm. If anything goes wrong, the operator can hit that and turn it off at any time. It's the same thing as you have another one here for the same emergency. If he happens to be away from there and he sees something happening or he hears something, he can turn it off immediately. And we go to the screen, which is a touch screen, a 17 inch touch screen. At any time, he can also turn it off by pressing the screen itself. He has his icons on here for watching various stages of the process, which means that he can monitor the glass, he can monitor the function of everything moving through the system. He has cameras inside and all he has to do is touch the touch screen and it will go to that. You will see the hand move when we, when we touch one to the other. And he can monitor any section of what is going on. The cameras will come on and follow exactly what he wants to do. 
This vent on top is a vent that if there's a breakage outside, this air is also goes through the system to, to take it into a minus situation, which means that we can't have any mercury vapor or any phosphorus coming out through here. From here on inside is also minus, which means minus atmosphere. It's the same as being in a vacuum. And so therefore, everything is going to be sucked in. Nothing can come back out. So you can't, if you break a light, you're not going to be able to get any mercury vapor coming out or any phosphorus because you have a, a conveyor belt on the bottom that takes the lamps all the way through. So we can't have any emergencies outside that we cannot control. Now if we go to this side, we will see that we have the other door that, has, as I previously mentioned, this is just a switch for the, for the interior light. We also have interior lights inside. This is a, a mounting block for a system of taking the covering off explosion proof lamps which are dipped and you have to remove the covering all, otherwise you cannot break the lamp. You can break it but you can't, can't uh, break down the glass because it's coated and so therefore we have to strip the coating off and it's simply a, a mounting block for that. As you can see the two doors are normal c -tainer container doors. When they are locked and closed it gives us total security on the unit as well as the interior. Okay, we're now going to demonstrate some of the different types of tubes that we can put through the unit. Explaining to you as well that we wouldn't normally put fluorescence and high intensity lamps through as well because of the fact that we would like to keep the glass separate because you have different types of glass. You have hard glass in your high intensity discharge lamps. You have lime glass or soda glass in your fluorescence which is a much thinner glass and therefore we would like to keep them separate so they can be recycled and therefore reused and not combine hard glass with soft glass. Okay? includes all the outside features and the inside features of the unit. For any further information, all you have to do is look at www.mercovery.com.